from the News Channel 5 Network. This is SCORE on Business. Hey, welcome to SCORE on Business. I'm Pete Hendricks. I'm your host today. Make sure you check out SCORE Business. I'm at scorenashville.org. Our first guest today, Terry Humphrey, is an executive and leadership coach. She works with rising senior level and C-suite leaders to build individual capabilities and engage teams that transform organizations, even in the face of constant and persistent change. So thank you, Terry, for being here. Thank you, Pete, for having me. I'm yeah. excited to be here with you. Yeah. So. Tell us a little bit about a client you've worked with and what you helped them achieve. Happy to share. I have been in business for about 10 years, so picking a cl one yeah. client um, is, uh, is always an interesting challenge. But recently, I've worked with a woman in an executive role mm -hmm. that um, moved from a vice president level into a senior vice president level and it was a transition that was particularly challenging for her different reporting structure mm -hmm. some uh, interesting challenges with her peer group uh, receiving her into the senior team and also at a time when the company was in a quick growth pattern so they were scaling the company up and her role is in business development and marketing so some just some interesting um, challenges with personalities and also right. with her own ability to really understand what is expected of me um, how do I interact with this group? Essentially, people that she knew, people that she had grown up with, but they were very accustomed to her being in more of a project or process kind of role. And she had to begin to think of herself in more of a strategic way. Mm -hmm. So a uh, number of things that we worked on was communication. Communication is different at the executive level and also different in a C-suite setting or with the board. So working on that particular skill set, working on executive presence, how do I carry myself? How do I show up with more confidence? How do I own my space even when I'm not feeling confident uh, in right. it? You know, that type of thing. Yeah, and those are, that would make sense to me and good. So as leaders are promoted to executive roles, what changes do they need to consider in order to be successful? I love that question. The um, part of it is a mindset. So as a leader, your mindset is everything. So beginning to see yourself as an officer of the company, the decisions you make, the way you communicate affects everyone else in the organization. Mm -hmm. So you have to think t in terms of a bigger picture and what the impact is going to be of actions that you take. So communication in general, communication up in the organization, making sure that your communication is, is clear, that your messages are succinct, that you're asking questions that will benefit everyone in the room, and when you're communicating down in the organization, making sure it's the right level of granularity right level of detail so that the message is clear when it gets to yeah. you know, others in the organization. And to send it consistently. Yes, absolutely. Um, one of the uh, things that I think about with communication is repetition may feel boring to you as the individual leader mm -hmm. and so necessary to make sure that everyone is really clear about the message, checking in and making sure the message is landing in the right way, having being in conversation with people to make sure that they're getting that. So communication is, is one area that I work a lot uh, you know, with leaders building relationships to support more trust in the organization. So one of the things that we're often promoted in our area of expertise. Mm -hmm. So if I am in accounting and I'm promoted up through the ranks, I'm known because I've been able to get things done in accounting, that I'm good in that particular subject matter. 
and yet when I'm sitting at the executive level, I am representing the company. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure that my uh, peer in legal or finance or sales or whomever is also successful and that we are making decisions together as a unit. I have to have a different voice and a different point of view at that right. level of the organization. Yeah, th so earlier in the, their, the person's career, being somewhat siloed may mm. have been more important, but on, in the C-suite, that has to go. Right, exactly. You have to give that up. You have to be able to represent your area. You have to understand what's mm -hmm. going on in your area, but also see it in a larger context. A good friend of mine is always using the term, and I've adopted it. You have to step up on a balcony mm -hmm. and look out over the organization when before you were on the dance floor with everybody else. Right. And uh, that, to me, is a, a nice way of visualizing the difference in the role. Um, and, you know, one of the things I hear an awful lot about are politics in an organization. Politics, for the most part, are missing conversations. It's a misunderstanding of, if I understand what your motivations are, what you're trying to accomplish, and I can figure out ways for us to stay in conversation about things, staying in debate if we need to, making sure that I understand your point of view, you understand my point of view, there are generally going to be fewer opportunities for politics to actually occur. It's about building relationships that work. It doesn't mean it's easy. Right. Um, but ha having that point of view of building relationships for the better of the organization Another aspect of that is that I can help you be successful in what you're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to reap the benefits of that. Right. And so just seeing each other as being in that relationship to support success of the organization. And that's a different point of view. If you're, I recently worked with a client where we're talking, sitting in a meeting and talking about their particular area and not getting their voice heard. And the focus became the person who leads the department, how can I help her get her voice heard in such a way that her team benefits and that others begin to see her as part of that larger team mm -hmm. of her peers. Right. So it's those relationships that would benefit from her taking a different approach. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. And so with companies that are a little smaller, mm -hmm. you know, that are growing, um, the the founder is now leading. Yes. What are some things that you would suggest they be aware of to to avoid trouble? Like, for example, mm -hmm. a moment ago you mentioned politics. Well, the the top dog can impact yes. politics. Can you talk a little to that? Sure. Um, the, one of the things I always think is interesting in working with small businesses that are in that growth mode is whoever founded the company started usually with a small group of people or could have started just on their own with mm -hmm. an idea. And there's a transition from being in sort of the hand-to-hand -hand combat of daily operations to being more of a strategic thinker, spending time thinking about the organization, spending time thinking about how the team, their direct reports, even if they only have two or three people on their mm -hmm. immediate direct team, how we need to work together in order to help grow the business. And so that person needs to have more of a focus on vision um, and being able to articulate what is the vision, where are we going, mm -hmm. you know, why are we showing up for work every day, but also how do we align ourselves so that we're all walking in the same or running in the same direction. And that alignment piece can often prevent politics. So setting some standards, like in my role as a CEO, <laughs> your role as a COO, here's how I expect us to work together and here are, for my entire team, here's some standards that I expect in the way that we um, operate together. So setting some expectations mm -hmm. for our behaviors and having some conversation about that can be really helpful from the get-go. Right. Um, and maybe helping people understand that the, the goal is not perf perfect operations or perfect accounting. It's what the company needs to so that everybody succeeds together. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. No, well said.
Yeah. yeah. So, so we'll, yeah. let's take a break okay. and we'll get back and talk more. We'll be right back. Thank you. 